Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this is the Pokemon Speedruns podcast season three, episode two. Uh, we got a lot of great stuff ahead of us, so we'll sort of go through this intro here. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Etiquette. Um, with me are other regular hosts, uh, Iron. Hey, everybody. Uh, Jordan97. Hello. And Tucker Little Rat. Hello, everyone. Um, and with us today, we've got two very special guests. Uh, we have Maddox. What's up, guys? And Pokeguy. Hello. Um, right. So uh, we're going to jump right into sort of the main focus of the podcast today. Um, I think last month we uh, went over. We're going to be trying a new format here. So this is sort of our, our main focus of this podcast. And this is probably one of the best uh, old records that we've seen in Pokemon in quite a long time. So I will let Pokeguy and Matic take this one away. Uh, yeah, so honestly, really, there's not that much to say about this run because just everything went right. Like, there's a bit, like literally the worst thing that happened was on Champion. Um, one of the first like really good things, I guess, that happened is that I got Bridge Red Bar, which is what we're looking at here. Uh, I actually missed a lot of ranges on this bridge, which allowed me to get into Red Bar and keep it all the way up to Bill. Which is very good. Yep, and if you're looking at the splits right away, you're realizing this is not this not a normal moon time. Uh, it, nothing like significant happened up to the end of moon. It just it's for is one of those runs where. Uh, so the best Mount yeah. Moon that anyone has ever gotten, like literally ever, is a twenty three seventeen. So this is only ten seconds behind the best run of all time. Yeah, this point. And it's just no major time loss, no extra encounters uh, to this point and going forward. Um, well executed. Yep. Uh, and so, let's see what else we got. Uh, I guess just one thing, like how often, hmm. like how easy i guess would it be to like is it to get red bar on like the bridge section because i know you said you missed a lot of ranges and that's how you got it right it doesn't happen that often it just there's not you can't really do much to like force it mm -hmm. it's just kind of luck based um the most common way to get it is to enter the manky fight with like 20 something hp and then get karate chop that's usually how it's going to happen I, be mm -hmm. I believe that's what i got yeah it is yeah, there's, I'm there's not much range. manipulating going on. This is, yeah, where the first bit of bad RNG comes in the run, but it but kind it of, like, out. yeah, it's like that, that's even... that's kind of a theme with this run, is he gets bad RNG, but then afterwards, the, the RNG kind of carries him into a good position, naturally. Like, it kind of works out, like, he won't get a quick attack when he wants it, but then later he gets a quick attack crit and lives by 5 HP, and the quick attack prior would have been the end of it so there's there's a whole lot of that um misty usually getting x defend crit which is what he ends up getting uh usually terrible for red bar setup but if everything goes smoothly you get the vine whip and the sonic boom and cruise on afterwards yeah miss atkins range yeah. here yeah just missed like every range on bridge Mm-hmm. Which is usually not good. Part of the run. Yeah, HP's getting a little lower here, and you want to be ideally around above 14 for the Mankey. Mm hmm. Because Karate Chop crits 255 out of 256 of the time. Mm hmm. One of the nice parts about this run is it didn't really need to YOLO at all the the early game definitely carried it um there was one major you flow towards the end game but that was kind of just to secure a ridiculous time and i respect going for it with the setup that he got but we'll get to that eventually but yeah this is where the manky comes up and you're kind of getting an idea okay it's, it's one of those runs where if I get Karate Ritz. Chop, it's super good. Mm -hmm. It's kind of handed to you. And I get Karate Chop. 
And then I keep this all the way to Bill's house, which is saves like 20 to 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's a bit sketchy if you miss any mega punches anywhere. Especially on this fight. This fight's like really the scariest fight up to Bill's house. Mm -hmm. But you just have to hit two mega punches. Yeah, you end up getting quite close here, actually. <laughs> so you get very low. I remember. Yeah, the Zubat's definitely the most important one. Yep. How much does the Zubat do? Or what can it do that makes it, it can, the one that you need it to hit the most? Supersonic. Ah, supersonic, yeah. supersonic, bite. supersonic bite and leech life as well. Yeah. So, and I believe both of those put in, they would, they do six normally, seven's a high roll, but being at one HP is really bad. Yeah. Um, That's just dead to like any mega punch missed or quick attack. So. Yeah, you pretty much just hold it for this fight. And I think a reasonable person would, would, uh, like potion eater and mail or something no yeah i mean <laughs> i don't know That's 10, a HP, tough choice. 10 hp here is pretty safe yeah the tough part about this section is you're really putting your um your rng's holding your hand uh, you can't you can't potion the text there. is too good that's a scary mess Oh yeah, one thing I can talk about is that I actually intended, because I'm getting hit really low here, I actually intended to potion three times at Bill's house, <laughs> um, but I just accidentally only potioned twice, and it ended up working out extremely yeah. well. Yeah, that was a really big deal, actually. But yeah, I literally was like, okay, I'm going to potion three times because this runs super good, and there's no reason to play risky, and then I potioned only twice and then got X-Defend crit. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The bridge time was a twenty nine fifty one. I want to say there's only a handful of sub thirties, maybe like probably less than ten ever. Maybe sounds right. No, no. I've you almost gotten ten alone. Definitely, okay. I might have gotten ten honestly. Yeah, there's been about a dozen or so, a dozen or two, but. So yeah, uh, like because you said like this going to red bar. How much does that like? Would you rather be getting into red bar and then miss all those ranges, or was missing the ranges still slower? Even uh, no. getting into red so, bar, getting red bar, uh, saves a lot more time than getting all the ranges. Okay. So it's definitely a good thing overall. I mean, ideally, you get into red bar without all that. I just make another mega punch miss. Jeez. Yeah, the um, ideal world. <laughs> that's that doesn't happen very often. You normally have to lose some turns to get red bar, so it's 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 a good thing overall. That's fair. By the way, uh, whenever you are wanting to like go into other sections, just let me know, see, because I'm the one that's controlling all this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, now it's yeah. good. Um, that was the end of the motion part. Yep, so at nine. this point here, you could, yeah, this is a decision. You could do two or three. I think he was thinking three potions, but he was saying aloud two potions. That's uh, right. So he ended up going with two. I just, I just uh, messed myself up and completely yeah. intended to heal three potions, but which ends up, yeah, it's one of those things that you're a little scared for a second, and then once he gets past Misty, it's significantly better that he only used two. Like a very big deal. Yeah, we can skip ahead now to mm, cool. Boat Revel or, yeah, because I just got X Defend crit on Misty, so I left with about the same HP I had, mm -hmm. which is, which I was fine with on this run. 35 55. There's only, now there's only been like less than 5 35 Misties. So, only five. Yeah, like 35 Misties yeah. are not a common thing. No, not at all. That Pidgeotic can stand attack, which would have been very bad. Especially because I needed some damage. Mm -hmm. uh, you can either horn attack or mega punch this, but since I still wanted damage, I horn attack, but I crit anyway. Yeah, in the ideal world, you get like hyper pain crit or something. So now, I, so now I'm just hoping for Vine Whip to put me into good Sonic Boom range. And then if I didn't get Sonic Boom, it would be perfect 
HP to stall on Cubone, and I do get the Vine Whip. Mm -hmm. So 30 HP here is really good for this pace. Like, I'm extremely happy with this. This Vine Whip is enormous. Sonic Boom is nowhere near as good. With yeah, that. so I, either I get Sonic Boom, and it's super, super good, or I just delay it to Cubone, which is also fine. Yeah, so you can go to Surge um, at this point. But getting Sonic Boom over Cubone saves, like, what, 15 seconds? 15? Yeah, um, that sounds right. Maybe more. Oh, so if I remember right, this is one of the places where you save some time over the old record because uh, Huangro mm -hmm. went for Gentleman Candy, right? He did, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely no reason to do Gentleman at 30 HP. Huangro had six at this point, so he fought Gentleman for a little bit of safety. Mm -hmm. But yeah, absolutely no reason to do that here. If I left with like four HP, then yeah, I would have. Yeah, two to four is usually that magic number where if the run is good, it's totally reasonable to. Yeah, and the reason uh, for that is because yeah, if you have if you have four HP, you're dead to Pikachu quick attack on surge. But gentleman gives you an extra level, so you'd have like seven HP if you did gentleman, which doesn't die. Yeah, gentleman will guarantee the Voltorb range, and quick attack is thirty five percent from the Pikachu, so. Pretty scary when the run is good. You can skip ahead like a minute. Some things later. On. Yeah. Get the surge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, like I said, I'm just I'm not thrashing because I want to get hit with Sonic Boom, which would be extremely good. And I did Sonic Boom. So now I've got full fly split Very red big bar. Deal. Very big deal. That's like a one in four there. A little bit more, but. Um, no, quick attack here would have been nice, but you can't be that greedy. Also, I, I think you can very, like you laureled the bubble beam, so it did a little bit less than half. Yeah, so I want to like just guarantee it. It's like a 90, high 90% range to. No reason to, to risk uh, it, though. No, yeah, this, this run. So he ends up using more attack, which is like a second slower. But so at this point, the forty-three, forty-three, thirty-nine surge is seven seconds off the best surge ever done. Mm -hmm. And I have full frost at red bar, so this is yeah. You've, you've been in this situation good. a few times for sure. Fly split, I just get every range. I think indeed. So this is the first time after your forty-three-three X. Or you've gotten several right. 4333X. Uh, I got, got 34333s, I think. Yeah, but a lot of them fell into the fly split. Yujito got a 4332, which mm -hmm. was the best ever and still is. So. And was that also Oddish Girl? I don't know. So this, this, this next split is like. I did have 143. Finish... I did have 14333 get a good uh, fly split, which was the. 101 29 flute that I got. Last PB. So yeah, it's just a perfect fly split. Very good. There's the Oddish Girls, a large run killer. 55% range, and it has Sun Spore Sleep Powder. If you get hit with those, it's pretty bad. Sleep Powder is worse because we do buy Paralyzed Heals now. We used to not. Yeah, I was, I was thinking back to the old world record, the one before Huangbro at this point. This is just so similar, other than you have better red bar, but like I was just so worried that here Mega Punch miss into everything just falling apart. Yep. Uh, I think you had only one Mega Punch at this point, too. So, like, nope. you got, did three. you have multiple? Yeah. You had three. Wow. Okay. So you're. I believe that's what it said. Yep. Yep, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, so at this yeah, point, it's just uh, cruising. Uh, yeah. Double crit on Nottish Girl, which is two ranges that often kill the run. Uh, one's like a 50%, one's a 90%. Nottish has terrible moves. Yeah, I do take zero damage because I get every range and everything. Um, 
So I do actually level out at level 31 before Lavender Rival, so I had to do early drill. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can go to Lavender Rival now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lavender Rival, which yeah. early drill on this route is a little awkward. Um, there's only like so many specific HPs that you can get put to. Uh, that you go for that in this route because you have to get one less super repel and yellow some grass tiles and safari zone. Mention that later, the Koga split. But yeah, it could skip to Lavender Rival for sure. There you go. Yeah, so if you have red bar here, like good red bar, normally you'd just Thunderbolt this Pidgeotto, but I'm actually out of red bar at this point, so I want to get hit. So you X Act Drill, um, and I get Quick Attack Critical down to five. <laughs> so if it Quick Attacked again, I was just dead. But yeah, and the pace was so good that you could even justify potioning. I, uh, there. Yeah, potioning definitely would not have been insane, but mm -hmm. you know. Then you get a potioning 50 50 shot to get put back. And then... Potioning into Sand Attack, and then not getting Quick Attack would be, you know. Not good. Yeah, the this run was, was good. One of the biggest scares of the run, if not the biggest scare, it's probably that moment. Yep, and then just got to hit two rock slides before the heel pad, which I did, and then and hit the other two rock slides. I think the split was just like perfect from here, mm -hmm. <laughs> which isn't easy with early drill because you have a fifty percent radicate range with Thunderbolt and. It can quick attack and the rat before yeah. it can quick attack, but I just one shot it and got no quick attacks, which is really good. So the split was super good as well. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I was thinking if I should go for Silph Bar or not. Um, any normal person would not go for Silph Bar here. That's right. Right, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> He's absolutely right. It's, uh, yeah, it's. Like, this ended up being a 101.15 flute, and I believe the second best flute ever is a 101.50. Mm -hmm. So this uh, was really... Guess... Or I did... I also got a 101.29, but besides me, I believe the best flute ever is a 101.50. Mm, so this is a very oh. rare, like, happens once in a year case where... And like, most people with, like, any 101 would not go for so far. You get the run that could... Uh... Get the world record with absolutely no yellows to the end. Which is... yeah. Like, yeah, if I skip Silph Bar here, it's still a pretty easy world record. It's still pretty easy 144. So, yeah, we can Silph skip Bar. to Silph Bar Bach. This is one of the worst things that happened the entire run. Mm -hmm. It's getting glare here. But it's but somewhat mentioned... of a blessing again, like I say. Like I feel like you get a perfect Arbuck here, you're not even considering so far at all. That could be but true. That the could be paralyzed true. <laughs> there slightly like gives a slight notion, like, all right, now perfect setup is in the cards. Uh, which you didn't actually get perfect setup, but you got near. I got like a really good setup. setup. Double X special is super good. Yeah, this whole section of the game is debating. Everything after the heel pad, he's he's thinking like you know you're on the golden run right now, and there's a fifty fifty risk you could take that just pretty much finesses well, anything could go wrong without a depth, and that was pretty much world record. So I think it, I think at this point I am like one hundred percent. I know I say one hundred percent, but I'm like I'm like planning on skipping because. Like, especially with 96 HP, I can't get the perfect setup. But then Amoeba comes in. Then Amoeba comes in and says, <laughs> what does that say? Do you not go for glory? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I, I even... All for the all the all time. I don't know yeah. if I even read that, but... It was poetic, almost. Um, uh, but I get the best setup I could ask for from this point. So I go for mm -hmm. it. So this is perfect. As as it does 50 fit. 50 to damage you every turn. So, yeah, 83. This is just perfect X special again on Gyarados. Yep. So, I'm damage. just like, okay, I gotta do it. I'm crazy, but if I you got, got quick it. attack there. He would have backed out. 
and it did miss. Yeah. I could have I could have just drilled at this point. I was I definitely considered it, but I just I stuck to doing so far at this point. Mm -hmm. That's a decent. That's decent HP. It's not the oh. best, but if I taste yeah. the best, so the best would be like what, yeah. five eight. or something. Eight, yeah. Right. Just eight, having it all the way through Koga. Seven. But yeah. this seven is out, perfect. But living for time. This level's out at thirty nine, I think. Yeah. So um, the two X special or thirty eight. This was this was the low roll. I have it here. What was it? Uh. It was uh, 66 to 78, and you got a 68 roll. So pretty much you're expecting to take more damage for sure. You get the third lowest roll. Yeah, double X special is really good, so this HP is still fine even with the lower roll. Um, yep, so this, yep. this, mm -hmm. this next fight, there's a Q-Bone. If it uses Bone Club and hits, you die. <laughs> it's just, yep. just over. 21% to die because it can miss. Mm -hmm. Which never happens. I hate dying to this thing. Yeah, at least favorite still fight to die to. Very demoralizing. Used to, used to just ice beam it back in the day. Uh, that was yeah. Awesome. Late earthquake now. Same with the, he was stalling with the flute. Pretty sure back in the day you just EQ the Gyarados. That seems faster. So yeah, I'm leveling out at 38. So if I, so ideally the Nidorino horn attacks and just so I just keep red bar all the way through Koga. Um, but if it didn't, I was actually gonna thunderbolt this Rhyhorn so and hope it hits me. And it can tail whip or guard spec. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Rhyhorns can be inconsistent. But ideally, I just get a horn attack here on this Nidorino and then just keep red bar. Which it does. That is a very big deal. You can see, just like everything's going right. <laughs> yeah. Like Fury Attack, two or three turn would have been perfectly fine, but that would have been faster, just, but obviously slower. Just the peak, yeah. This is the best you can get it. Song Rhyhorn's going to lose turns. See, so I would have Thunderbolted that Rhyhorn and hoped it hit me. But if it tail up, then I would have in a bit of trouble because my HP was pretty low for that. And also, the sweet spot at this point is eight HP. Or into yeah, because you want to live uh, headbutt from the hip. Now confusion, you've, you're accepting that you die to that, but you want to give yourself a fighting chance on headbutt. She usually doesn't crit. Uh, but yeah, this is. Pretty wild at this point. Yep. Having a 101 15 flute, and then this is like, I'd call this really good so far. It's only what? It's like yeah. four turns off perfect, which is, but that's really good. That's including yeah, not hurting Hypno. Yeah, I never leveled out. So it was other than the stall, and yeah, it's pretty much the stall was the only bad thing. Yeah, this is. Do this... you want to skip towards Hypno? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hypno is the last, like, Sylph Bar thing. Once you get past him, you're pretty much free until Black Belt. If it uses Confusion, you're dead. Just one in four. Or you can crit it. Also dead to Headbutt critical. Got poison gas. Very big. Yep. Next thing. Best I outcome is critting it, but yeah. 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 I see everyone just popping off. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, like, this is now, like, by far the best run ever. Yeah. Like, this is a 114 45 Coca, which. Yeah, no. I, I the first, the first one fifteen didn't even happen that long ago, and this was a one fourteen. So, yep. So it could accept so many trolls. Just needs to get past the 
this point there's like really four things standing in your way other than an unlucky gem will miss somewhere. Um, or like Bruno next or attack. Something, but... Next attack. Not great. Variance goes down. This is the end. This is what you consider the end game here. And self destruct turn one is also a very big deal. Can lose a lot of time next attacks. Lost time to world record there because world record didn't get PP up. And also had probably better so far. It had better level ups. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Because he did perfect dominate. setup. Mm -hmm. Made a mistake there. <laughs> That's okay. It doesn't didn't really lose time, but you're supposed to wreck candy there. Just delayed it a bit. Yeah. That's actually Probably what skip. I do now. <laughs> Probably skip the black belt now, I guess. It's Nothing really belt. happens between. Didn't get super potion on Blaine, which would have been nice, but that's okay. Yep. We're on a riskier route that skips the uh, mansion that's right. candy, which is pretty much what everyone else uh like if I if I could have, I would have gotten the candy on this pace, mm -hmm. but uh, because of the shopping I did, I couldn't really. Yeah, there was no reason to. Didn't have any yeah. extra specials, which is the whole point. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, this is just like what sixteen percent to kill you. Yeah, if it uses karate chop, if it crits karate chop, you're dead. It's like seventy percent to crit karate chop. If it crits low kick, you're dead. Not as likely, but. One of my best friends before this had died to that. Low kick crit, yeah. Yep, so this is huge. No Yol or Lai, which is often the case when we're going for world record. Yeah, most, like, really most runs going for 144 would have to Yol or Lai. But as you can see, I did not. World record did Yolo Lorelai. So what is Yolo Lorelai? See, yeah, so, I'm not going to see it. So normally you swap to a uh, Pidgey or Spira, usually Pidgey, um, and she's guaranteed to Aurora Beam that, and then for also also for whatever reason she's guaranteed to Rest Turn too. So you can swap to Pidgey, she Aurora Beams and kills it, and then you can swap back to Nido King and safely X Accuracy, and she'll Rest, and it's just like. It's a nearly guaranteed win, um, as long as she, she doesn't Gen One miss a roar beam on the bird. Right. Um, but you can just risk the fifty-fifty turn one. She can use a roar beam or rest turn one. Um, that saves about eighteen seconds. Yeah, and that is what World Record had to do, and did successfully. Mm -hmm. It's pretty significant like, when there's no not that much variance. Left I'm like in literally. The world. 0 for 9 all time on Yolo Lorelei on <laughs> runs that would have gotten world record. Hey. I literally just never get rest. It's kind of crazy. but So luckily I didn't have to do it. Yeah. yeah well, also there. as a side blessing, uh, like a week before this run, he had gotten a 144 pace run that died yeah. to champ. Yep. And that one was just barely 144. So although and at I, the time I, I, it was I, I, heartbreaking, like, yeah, he would have been done at that point, and this run wouldn't have happened. So. Honestly, the biggest mistake I made the entire run was probably this split. I kind of fucked up the repels a little bit. Yes. So well, earlier, he, he would... Strong spaces, I guess, and then... Yeah, so I meant... As Matt mentioned earlier, I bought one less super repel to able to be able to do early drill. Um, you're supposed to say that in the safari zone, but I forgot to. So I had to no. save it in Victory Road, which is fine. I just wasn't familiarized with it, so I kind of messed it up a little bit. But it wasn't like a big deal. Yeah, the the optimization is the difference is like clearing one text box extra if if you do this oh. instead. But um, because we're so used to using the repels in certain places in Victory Road. Definitely throws you off when you have to use two instead of three. Yep. But yeah, usually the idea is the third repel, you'll use it so that you never run out of it uh, in the normal route. You finish E4 before it runs out. Mm -hmm. And the Safari yeah. Zone 
skip is just faster if it works. But I forgot to do it, but that's okay. The variance at this point is like one or two Pokemon that are 50-50 ranges. They they don't kill you, but you, you get an extra turn if you don't hit them. You yeah, miss I Blizzard. Miss, did miss the Pidgey range. Did you miss this one? I think you hit this. I missed oh, the Pidgey. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I missed the Pidgey, but you hit the ride on. Yes. I'm just fine. Getting mm -hmm. one of those is good. I'm gonna skip the Bruno now. On to Bruno five. Yep. Because Lorelai already mentioned exactly what happens. It's not exciting or anything. Nope. That's, That's a bit too far. A bit too far. Yeah. That's Lorelai. So oh, that looks about right. Cool. So this if you lights. don't, yeah. If you don't take damage there, you actually level out before the end of the fight. So you actually really want to take damage, and Rage is the best thing you can get. Because it's fast and barely does anything, but that's all you need. Just a tiny hit. Perfect. And then Agatha. So the route I'm doing does get a worse Agatha. So I'm because of skipping the mansion candy. Um mm -hmm. normally you can just X special and then you one hit everything. Um but with this, I'm X speeding and two hitting the goal bat. That rage there also made one, four, three a lot more likely. Yep. Like significantly more likely. It's like another four seconds he saves over like a standard X defender, um, Harden or something. So this Gengar I'm about to set up on is not good. It has hypnosis, confuse ray. Dream Eater and Nightshade. So I want Dream Eater or Nightshade. Nightshade's a little bit scary, but not really. But I'm really just hoping for Dream Eater here. Which I do get. So now, I'm, like I mentioned earlier, because I skipped the rare candy, I'm going to hit this Golbat. Um, Golbat is not nice. It's got like Haze, which is bad, because in the last Gengar outspeeds, it's got Confuse Ray, it's got Supersonic, and it's got what, Wing Attack? Yeah. But I just crit it. So that's just like a perfect Agatha, besides not having yep. red bar, which is crazy because Agatha is really bad. Yeah, and this run could have afforded, could afford so much time loss. So obviously, death is you can't do, but. So yeah, at this yeah. point, I think, at this point, I'm pretty sure I said that I would, I literally just want Hydro Pump Miss because I don't care if I have red bar or not because this is easy. Yeah. And also, Champ is just very scary on this route. Yeah, on this route, if you get Sky Attack, you can't do much about it unless you have the HP for it. I mean, on this pace, I could have just full restored, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it would have been fine. So yeah, this is just easy Super Potion for Lance. I'm literally just... If I, if I, just, if I literally just get Hydro Pump Miss, it's like 97% to just be it. What is in your mind at this point? Because, I mean, I've seen you moving like your hand through your hair at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess I just couldn't believe that this was actually happening. Like, getting a perfect Agatha on this pace is just completely ridiculous. That's what I was thinking. And so, like, yeah, now I'm just like, please miss Hydro Pump. Because normally you want Hydro Pump here. It gives you red bar for this fight and hopefully the next fight. But I'm just, I would be completely fine with Hydro Pump this year. Which I also, I'd say, yeah, after, after Agatha, you're pretty much, that's like the first point in the run where you're actually favored to finish it. Which, also, that was, that was a very high a roll Hydro Pump. What was I at? Like, yeah, it's a pretty high roll Hydro Pump. I thought I actually did think it crit, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. This HP is not great, though. Because mm -hmm. one potion, I level a lot of red bar. Also, that blizzard miss costs 143. Oh. Yeah, that's a rough one. Only but blizzard miss, though, so... Like, literally, if I had one less HP here, it would have been 143 as well. Mm -hmm. Just one less. Because I wouldn't have leveled out on champ. 
immediately, yeah. But yeah, if I so I I could have he either has a potion, choice. I could have either potion or super potion. Super potion like guarantees one forty four pretty much. Uh, or, doesn't guarantee it, I wouldn't say. <laughs> it makes it I don't know what you're saying. Very very good. Yeah, it makes it very good. But there are there is wing attack crit. I yeah, double well right. Attack. I could have gotten wing yeah. attack crit or double wing attack to get me one forty three. Mm-hmm. If I potion, all I needed was one wing attack for one forty three. Um, but I was also dead to double wing attack or wing attack crit. But I did just potion. Which maybe was a bit crazy. I don't know. You want to yeah, get category at this point, it seems like. <laughs> you give it two turns, it has um, one With attack. this HP, if I got sky attack yeah. turn one, I actually I actually X speed first so that I get the defensive badge boost, so I could have super potion to survive sky attack. But mm-hmm. it just doesn't do anything, and that's it. Yep. So at this point I know it's like one forty four oh five or something around there and it was obviously mm-hmm. yeah, yeah there's was a red bar, yeah. 37 hp is red bar unfortunately oh. But... Oh, no. <laughs> so yeah would have been 143 as i said but that's okay yeah there were like standard slightly less than average lance and champ but nothing like they're just yeah that's the big thing about this run there was no point where he lost more than like 10 seconds at a time which pretty much happens in every every psr record that i've watched there has to be at least one point where something goes wrong for a little bit you have to yeah this is not having red bar here is the worst thing that happened in the entire run Mm -hmm. yeah the, the glare from our book not great but that's like eight seconds or so uh, previous ones like Wang Bro's prior world record at Gentleman Candy, where Po Guy here was actually able to keep up with it without the uh, better ranges or increased chance to hit ranges. You could just hit them anyway. <laughs> and uh, the one prior, Po Guy had to full restore on four turn Thrash Girl, which lost like a minute and a half. And was still a world record for like two years. So this run is, it's not really about skill anymore. It's, <laughs> I mean, you have to have the skill level to get anything near it, but the the luck, the the way it kind of played out, you can't replicate it easily at all. I would not be surprised if this one stands for five plus years some people say forever but i don't know things can change strats can change it's not likely this this route has been very optimized but i think this, the only this way... might be the best run for the route i would say the only way it probably realistically gets beaten if this if it's is like full yellow elite four honestly is if someone's going for a record and then they just, yeah, it probably would take that, but we'll see, I guess. But there is currently the bounty. Who want to talk about yeah. that? Because that might change some things in terms of people going for world record. Since one, there is an incentive to get another uh, one four four time at this point. Yeah, so I uh, you gave the pace bin, didn't you? Let me actually just quickly get that. And yeah, there's... drag this over. Mm-hmm. There we go. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so there's can... currently a few. There we go. That's higher right. price bounties <laughs> for uh, red runs, pretty much focusing on red glitchless. Uh, specifically, the big one is if someone's able to get the world record. This was posted after Pogo's world record. Yeah, so uh, there's a bounty for five thousand dollars. So Sayonara made most of these bounties, and he's just he's just he's running a bit of red himself, but he just likes watching people run it, and <laughs> he was sad that you know people might try not try to go for record or anything after my run. So that's why he made these bounties, so so he could watch more red. <laughs> 
I mean, I guess that is a way to get more people to play Red. <laughs> yeah. So you can yeah. watch it. Put 5,000 to beat the world record. Yeah, it's wild seeing all these bounties for sure. There's a well, few more actually that aren't in this pace bin that weren't posted by Sayonara. That, is that, that's correct. I'm, the thing is, <laughs> the world record is literally so good that $5,000 is like not worth it. Yeah. Almost at this point. Yeah. Kind of crazy, but definitely the 144 bounty is kind of crazy. Uh, is good. Classic will be interesting because that's been a very long standing record. Uh, it is the longest standing, isn't it, right now? Yeah, I think it's the longest. Long. Yep. Both red and yellow. Yeah, at this point. Two longest standing. And uh, there's also one short category, which should be interesting. It's It's going to be a bounty for who gets the best time by the end of the year. So I imagine it'll be. A bit more hot towards the end of this year, but uh, the beat misty category um, should be interesting. I think new there'll be new minips made for it, and new strats, a nice forty-five minute category. Definitely shorter than that. But... What do you guys think of the alt main bounty? No, there's quite a few of those. I think. What, his bounty is like for sub 150 with an alt main, I think, which is cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what, Fable and Squirtle are the only ones who can do that? I yeah. Think. I don't know which yeah, one. Yeah, at this point. Either. With the this current Squirtle, route. Squirtle route hasn't really been looked into that much recently. It could probably be mm -hmm. online quite a bit. I'd imagine it could get sub 150. I don't know anything about Clefable. I know it has a 151 yeah. already. That's about all I know. Yeah. Fable would definitely require uh, the tough part about Fables is really hard to get past Surge with the time needed to get a sub 150. Um, and it's not very motivating to practice the late game, <laughs> but if someone's very good at the late game, they could, it could totally be done. Just standard good execution. Uh, the rough part about that category is it's just extremely difficult to get pace to Surge and red bar at the end, which is what you need. It is doable though. So yeah. These are cool. There's some incentives for who gets it first, like the 144 bounties. You're getting a little bit less if, if you're the second person to get it. Uh excluding Poke Guy, of course. Uh so that's more of the focus now, I'd imagine, than later on the classic and alt main bounties will be explored. But yeah, it's pretty neat. I don't think there has been a bounty of this size in PSR. Correct me if I'm wrong. Not that I can remember. Yeah. I mean, you'll see stuff like this for uh, SM64, and that's a lot more common, but <laughs> that's a whole other space. Yeah, this was neat. Any finishing touches on the record, Poker Guy? I don't think so. I think we went over everything. Mm hmm. It's a good run. Good early game. Risky. Did the risky stuff when it didn't need to be done. Yep. This run will. I mean, in my opinion, it's the best run in PSR, but I've also not explored a lot of the different categories. So I don't have the most. Uh... A little bit of biased take on it for sure. And I it'd be tough for Poke Guy to say that as well because yes, he's run a lot of different categories, but it's also his run. So <laughs> I mean I would definitely but a lot of people have that opinion. A lot of people have the opinion that it's if not the best, one of the, like it's gotta be a I can definitely say it's the best general one to three by a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After that it gets kinda hard to compare, I think. For sure. Yeah, I don't think any categories. DS run is has gotten to that magnitude of insanity. So yeah, I know Head Bob. Was trying to, I know Head Bob was trying to tell me XY record was that good. <laughs> That's XY. I think Head Bob doesn't one. think that. Yeah, he, he said three thirty eight would be that good. I think. Yeah. yeah. 
I was going to say XY is the that. only one I can think of that in the 3DS to Switch era that would be close, I think. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, if that's all we have for talking about Red, then um, I think we can move on to the mid podcast break and we'll be back with other noted runs and even a leaderboard roundup. And also marathon runs coming up too. Yeah, that'll be it for this half of the podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back uh, to the community roundup section of the podcast. We're going to start with some uh, noted runs. We actually have quite a lot of them uh, this past month. Uh, so just kicking things off in the Gen One to Three uh, category, we've got a couple of um, notable runs from Grogear. Uh, first one will be uh, Blue Any Percent NSC World Record with an eleven twenty seven. Uh, we have Matt still here with us. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about this run? Yeah. Uh, so the major difference is this run. So Groger is also a big botter in the community. He's he's still finding new backup minips. I mean. Most of the optimal nips have been found, but uh, he's been exploring uh, different forms of extended minips, uh, extending the minip through fights. And he was actually able to uh, bot out um, extending the two bug catcher fights. Uh, there are three bug catcher fights towards the end. That's the major variance other than Route 1 encounters, uh, which this does not get any Route 1 encounters at all. About like one in one in fifty to happen, I believe. So you can imagine grinding this out is very degenerate, <laughs> degenerate, but eventually you get it, and then you have the very high pressure of uh, hitting this n- very difficult minip. Uh, extending minips through fights is not easy in Gen One. So I know for a lot of the other generations, the, the RNG is kind of separated between when you're manipulating between the overworld and in battle. Uh, but for Gen 1 and 2, it's not the case. So you have to, it's very sensitive. A lot of 60 frame text boxes you have to hit. As well as uh, in this gen, you need to hold A or B to make sure that the text prints at a consistent speed. Um, so it's very tricky. And to beat this, you, I think you pretty much have to get the same run, but better RNG on talking to the last uh, bug catcher. So Manips have extremely optimized this category at this point. And I think this is more than 10 seconds faster than the previous world record, which stood for quite a long time. Yeah, extended minip is definitely the interesting part of this. Usually, back prior to him finding it, there was only um... yeah, Groger saying there's six seconds to be saved. There was only the Pikachu crit, so you'd manipulate uh, through forest and only have a spear on your party. You manipulate a turn one crit from the uh, Pikachu that appears in front of the bug catcher. That's what starts the glitch that eventually warps you to the Hall of Fame. Then Ethereum crafted continuing the manip afterwards and that's what this run is. So here's the interesting part of the run. So no encounters to this point. There are two manips. People have theory crafted just YOLOing the grass here for a Spiro. And hoping it has good enough stats, but it's somewhat reasonable for a world record, which is funny. Yeah, almost everyone's going to manipulate this. What stats are we looking for for Spiro? Or is it, are we just going for a level five one with, with decent stats? Is that kind of what? I think it just, is? yeah, it really just needs this decent stats. I mean, having the 
better defense and better attack is mm-hmm. going to help guarantee some ranges. But I'm pretty sure most stats are fine. That's why it, it seemed fine to just catch a random Spiro. Uh, it does need to be level 5, though. And most of the Spiros are level 3. Mm, yeah, that would that'd be a problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so you're... You're doing that after getting perfect route one if you're going for world record. I mean, it's a good yellow strat if you're falling behind PB, but I don't think I've seen it work. But yeah, he's depositing here. It's necessary for this whole sequence. He's going to sack the Spiro and make the game do weird things. This is the second fastest way to beat red without uh, the standard any percent category that save corrupts the game and you beat in about a second or about a minute rather a little bit over a minute yeah I'll let this play out Also, I believe he's um, he's also IGT tracking, making sure that he's landing on one of the first uh, four frames. So IGT, there there's sixty different frames he can get. Slightly alters. Sometimes it doesn't work. He's specifically trying to hit a set of frames that'll work for the extended minute. So he's uh, he has a flow timer going, beeping every. Uh, every 60 frames every time it rolls over and then every single time you get an encounter you add uh, nine frames onto that has to do some of the transition that it slightly advances the rng yeah this would be the regular manip here you get the crit and then it'll just be over at this point he's clearing all the text boxes perfectly and this is the part that no one else has done yet. I don't think anyone else has used this strat before since he's uploaded this a few weeks ago. Yeah, he mentioned the Spiro's FFF1. So perfect attack, perfect speed, perfect defense. Special doesn't matter. This is the last variance part of the run. These three battles, you can get poisoned, which is really bad. He's he's extending it through for crits. So specifically looking at his inputs, you can see doing very particular inputs to get a crit here. Oh. Wow. He's keeping it going. <laughs> Goes into the next fight too. So I know Groger's in the chat, so it might be able to answer. Um, is this sort of like because I know I, I've not done much with like red nitto extended manip and everything, but I know that there was like, you know, six or eight different frames you could hit to continue. Is this like a similar thing where you've got different paths you have to worry about, or is it like really just strictly frame perfect here? Either way, it's super impressive. I'm just curious. Yeah. Here's the last bit of RNG. You mash A. Eventually, you could talk to this guy. And then, after you beat this fight, your game is 25% to just crash and the run is over, which is always. Oh my God. I would imagine a heartbreaker <laughs> on world record pace. But yeah, that is that is part of this category. It could just crash at the end. So you don't know after you finish the last fight. It's one sixty FPS window when the bug catcher when bug catcher one talks to you and it's a two frame window. Jeez. Is that crit on that Weedle? Is that one manipulated as well, or is that just luck? I think the last one might be luck. But I'm not certain. Okay. Because you're just kind of mashing. 
mashing A to mm-hmm. talk to the guy. So yeah. So once you warp to the Hall of Fame here, you know you've gone through. It's it's the warp that is where it crashes. So at this point, I'm sure he's pretty happy. Okay. Yeah, Grover's saying it's luck. Yep. Yeah. That was a very good NSC dot. Yeah, very, very interesting. Okay. Well, you got another uh, another yeah. NSC run um, to talk about, and that's Grover's yellow any percent second place run. Um, in 12 minutes, 30 seconds. I'm not as familiar. I've seen quite a few red NSC, red-blue NSC runs in the podcast every so often, but yellow I don't know as much about. Mm-hmm. Yellow so has the E-minip. <laughs> yeah, it has the E-minip. I know that. Oh, okay, I remember uh, the E-minip hearing about that. <laughs> Yeah, it's relatively new. I mean, a lot of the so you kind of you're more okay with encounters in this category as opposed to the blue NSC because uh, turns out the IGT for these minips is, are pretty inc- like incredibly bad. Like you have to actually get lucky for all uh, to get everyone first try. I think the minip ends up being less than fifty percent to work. I was going to say, the number that comes to mind is 27 out of 60, but that may be like an older version of the Manip, mm-hmm. too. Yeah, that sounds right. So hitting all the Manip's first try ends up being like around, oh, I want to say somewhere between 10 and 20%. Oh, yes, Pidgeotto. <laughs> Just for them to not fail because you saved on the wrong frame. Yeah, this minute's pretty wild. Yeah, this is for anyone who doesn't know what this looks like. This is very much a wait. Why is he doing all this random movement? Oh, wait. How did that happen? As soon as he walks into the <laughs> forest, so it's gonna look very random. It's all very necessary. Oh, yeah, wasn't this? So in the, this was in the marathon, right? I remember now. Yep. Yeah, they yeah, raced this. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and it's tough to see, but there is actually a pause there. Like a lot of Gen One manips, you're you're doing like buffers to try and walk frame perfectly and everything. Um, but there's actually a part in that movement inside the house where you have to like hesitate for like two frames and then continue your movement. So even if you get the right IGT, you still have to execute the manip correctly. And that's why. Yeah, this is perfectly normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the entire alpha band that find them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe C D E F T is someone was my favorite item when I was playing Clash Wars. And the moonwalk exit. Yep. Has a bike. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) And if you think it couldn't get weirder. Is it a hook metapod? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Infinite HP. And that's it. Yeah. It's Hall of Fame. GG. And you get to skip the whole walk into the Hall of Fame part, too, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> Plays the credits. <laughs> Plays the uh, outro of the Hall of Fame. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a spectacle when it works out. Yeah, I remember watching the marathon like 
how hard that minip is. So it's obviously a bit different in a, in a live setting, but definitely looks really tough. Mm -hmm. I think actually Huan Li Wei's managed to <laughs> pull off everyone first try. He didn't get IGT either, so that was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was not. We got a little bonus here too. as well. Red stop clock. Mm hmm. Yeah. So on the on the category of dark technology, there used to be a uh, soft lock, uh, or there was kind of like a meme you could. So this category is essentially you're waiting for the NPC to walk through a certain spot so that you can um, uh, start a glitch that makes you walk or behind Oak the incorrect way and you end up getting soft locked into the building. Um, it was made for Manipolis. Someone at some point made a save and quit Manip and Groger extended it further and he's manipping through the intro. So he did just clear every single text box uh, in the four frame window. And he's just starting the Manip right now. So it's this NPC, he needs her to walk onto the grass where Oak greets you. <laughs> this part's great. She needs to be on the tile to your left. It's part of the map that she just kind of walks there. <laughs> it's so funny to see a manipped version of this in contrast to the non manip ones because, like, Every nominip one, you just sort of stand there waiting. And you're just going all over the place, walking around <laughs> seemingly randomly. That's awesome. Yeah, so there's an opportunity for a tied world record. Uh, one of the meme parts of it is so you, you always get to Oak at the same time, but he has a 60 frame text box. So. Really, the world record is based off of how fast you clear that very last text box at the end. This one here. So St Stokey did the same manip, and he put it up as well, but Groger was able to beat him by one frame. Damn. <laughs> one more frame to go. So it's kind of a competition, and he said it's not. Yeah, there is one more frame to be saved. So... It's up for grabs if someone wants to frame perfectly <laughs> clear the intro, which it's, I've attempted it's to like do. Super and it's Mario Bros. Easy. stuff here. <laughs> yeah. So this is so a, the theoretical. Stuff. What if you just manip the whole run? And here it is. Very impressive. Bad boy. But yeah. Thanks for having me on, guys. I'm gonna pop out for now. Yeah. Th Thank you. Thanks for Thank explaining you, that sorry. stuff, Matt. Yeah. Have a good one. Take care, guys. Okay. Bye. All right. We're, uh, we'll we'll move on a little bit Gen from Gen one. 1 now. So <laughs> on to Gen 3. So this is uh, this is Sapphire, any percent glitchless Japanese second place by uh, Miriri. I think it's how you pronounce their name. The 153.07, which obviously, um, if anyone... It's familiar with Sapphire uh, in English. It's quite a bit faster in Japanese uh, for because of Xboxes and whatnot. Uh, this run was pretty solid. Um, minute and a half ahead after Winona. And then uh, they got a pretty good... They had a little bit of time lost through the uh, le later mid-game, early early late game, if you want to kind of think about it that way. But uh, pretty pretty solid uh, victory road and elite four as well. Uh, the record is about forty eight seconds. Oh no, about a minute faster. So looks like to be a one fifty two or so. Yeah, I don't remember. Like it's Ringo who has a world record. I don't remember the exact time. It's something like one fifty two, twelve maybe. But yeah, it's just came within a minute and then. 48 second PB. I guess another difference with Japanese is they use, they allow turbo. So that yeah. could have been the situation here. 
Uh, another record in, uh, which is also in Japanese, uh, uh, this is Blue Magma uh, doing a very, very rarely run category. This is Ruby. He ran, he ran Ruby. I'm not sure if it, there's a difference with Sapphire, but it's the any percent glitched category. Uh, so we all know about, a lot of people at us know about the Emerald glitched run, and that's pretty, uh, pretty wild. There's a lot of really weird stuff going on in here. <laughs> um, there's, um, there's the use of Covet, it looks like, or Thief, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, that's used, you actually end up in this double battle here. Um, Abra is taught, in the notes here it says Covet, but it could be Thief, potentially, I'm not sure. I don't know yeah. if Covet exists in Gen 3, actually. Um, or maybe it does, I think it does, actually, because I remember. It does, I believe. Plus one and mine and having it. <laughs> Yeah, so he uses he uses that move on with his Abra on his Marsh top. I'm not really sure why, <laughs> but uh, there's some weird stuff going on with Mail, it looks like, as well. They're holding Mail. Yeah, so like, I'll do it for like a tiny bit. Like, the thing that happened in the fight seems to be important. I don't know what, if that message has significance, but... From what I can tell, everything has mail, and then yeah, and it, you uses the mail on the wingle, to... and you just get rare candies. So like, you'll see it's the bottom item slowly going up. I'm just gonna this on for a good amount because it is literally just it's for a good while now oh wow yeah and then you just level up the one point to 100 and stomp through the game that's my understanding of this yeah maybe we could scroll a little bit ahead and see what level he ends up at because like legit level 100 I wonder if a hundred. I guess hundred, oh, yeah, because yeah, you wouldn't get you wouldn't get level ups or anything like that, or you wouldn't even gain experience. Yeah, no the XP. There. Yeah, exactly. So you definitely would be able to do this without being level hundred, but you save time just based on those text boxes not being there. I would assume this isn't possible in English, although there might be something yeah, you could do there. Only Japanese. Was it because I I, re I remember in English like the glitchless part, you know, when people refer to Sapphire as glitchless, it's like more of a formality. It's only one category in Sapphire. Yeah, yeah. Much. Uh, I don't. Who who was the person that did this originally? Look, it was um Epic Dude Guy. Epic Dude Guy. Right. Yeah. And it's actually um, this this run here beats out Ringo's glitchless time. So like the the two categories are almost the same time. Um, so actually, glitchless had a faster time than any percent for a while, but th this is now a few seconds faster. Yeah. So that previous record if you will was five years ago so this yeah. is not something that's run often so yeah like looking at like obsolete runes the only other obsolete room was from epic dude's guy also five years ago so like that's wild yeah it's a bit fair like oh there might be more than the japanese in the like the japanese wiki i don't know for certain but I guess, at least on the, the non-Japanese runners, it's a bit, a bit of a barrier to get into it because you obviously you'll need a. I guess you could do it on emulator, but you'd need a. Japanese yeah, there is a, there is an emulator movie. time, but it's rare. It looks like as well, which is mm. a little little behind, but. Yeah. Move on to the next run. So this is a uh, we haven't 
seen much fire leaf green recently, but this is a uh, second place in the Japanese category by Pletty with a 2 one thirty nine. Uh, pretty solid Squirtle. I'm looking at these IVs here, and they're all either 28 or 31. So, <laughs> so that's pretty wild. Um, 31 special attack, 31 speed, 31 defense, 31 HP, and then the other two stats are 28. So, uh, one of the better Squirtles that you could get. Pretty decent. We have we have seen people get really good. We have seen people. We have a general idea of what the God Squirtles are in terms of. In terms of trainer ID and the frame, but this is a, this is a pretty good one too. Yeah. Um, Would the I, are the squirtles still the same on the Japanese version? In terms of like... I was gonna I was gonna ask that. I think they might be, but I could be wrong. I know the train. I know the trainer IV. The trainer like natures on their Pokemon are different. So this, so the, so for example, on Lorelei, um, in English, you're always based on the speeds that you run. You always outspeed Jinx, but in this run, you actually have to, you have to use an X speed to outspeed it because right. of the the Jinx has a different nature. How annoyingly inconvenient! I think also that's the same case for Hitmonlee on Bruno. Although, yeah, I think it's Bruno as well. There might be enough. There's probably some other fights as well where there's differences there. Just happens that English is a little bit better just for the quicker setup. But yeah, not much really to say about this run. Looked pretty solid. Um, what's the record in this? I uh, say one fifty nine. Barely. Okay. <laughs> like I don't know the seconds. Is it... This isn't as, I guess, hotly contested, I guess, as the English side of things. Or it's just much harder to get on. Or maybe the record is just really good. <laughs> so it's been hard to, to get near it, but... 159.52. Uh, yeah, 52. The seconds, so... Yeah, uh, I, I don't hear of the Japanese runners doing uh, Fire Leaf Green as much. But also, I, I guess I don't pay too much attention to the Japanese side of things, I guess. So that could just be me. Yeah, it's at least on SRC, there's not as many runs. Hmm. But yeah, pretty good. Uh, pretty nice to see uh, a run from Fire Leaf Green here uh, on the Japanese side. So uh, we, we, as we mentioned, we, there is the tournament coming up soon. So we are, are going to expect to see a little more uh, Fire Leaf Green featured on the podcast, or at least in the the leaderboard on the leaderboards as well. So yeah, flurry of activity. See. All right, I guess we can move on to the next one. We actually don't have, I don't, looks, looking at our list here, it doesn't look like we have any runs from the DS or the 3DS side of things. We, um, I will say that we have had quite a few runs from Worcester and Heart Gold Soul Silver that have died to red recently. So, yeah, there was one last time night. We see something there. That one was, <laughs> oh, that one was so brutal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was a minute ahead or something of record. Got crit. Yeah, so. full minute. Uh, that, that is rough. But he'll yeah. break through it eventually. Sure. Yeah. That'll be a next month notice rune from the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess uh, we'll uh, we'll start things off uh, with, uh, I guess I'll pass it on to Etiquette here to talk about uh, the Let's Go side of things. Uh, yeah, so we have a few runs from Let's Go here um, on the Switch. Uh, this one is uh, Etchy getting the EV any percent record. Um, so this is a 257.01. Um, and this is the first time in a while that the fastest overall time has come back to the EV side. So uh, this beats out the Pika any percent <laughs> time as well. Um, yeah, really clean run overall. Um, 
ended up doing a bit of a safe strat on the final fight, uh, which basically cost the 256, uh, but guaranteed that it finished. Um, you can see from the splits, Echi really didn't do a whole lot of EV any percent, um, having a 300 before. So just sort of getting a, a clean sub three run um, seemed like more of the priority here. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, like I said, really standard run. Uh, nothing too, too bad happened. Nothing overly great happened. Um, just uh, just had like a really good star me and was able to, to clutch it out. Um, and so the, the safety strat here is you basically, you can do this without a Meowth, but Meowth makes it like literally impossible to die. Um, you fake out turn one and then you finish your setup on turn two. Um, and then once your setup is all done, you can just go ahead and sweep the fight. Um, the main reason why this loses, it loses overall about five seconds. Um, you end up not having to heal uh, ever during the fight, which is one of the main benefits of it. But you lose time because even though your partner Pokemon is dead, the game still kind of lags like double battles do. Um, so you can see like he's already selected yeah. his move, but the game just kind of waits anyways. Um, so if it were purely based on like turn count, move count, uh, it would just be a faster strategy, but because of the extra time for the lag, uh, it ends up wasting a bit of time. And um, like I said, ended up making it a 257 instead of a 256. But overall, really, really good run. Yeah, I was just I was just looking, um, and Meowth is only available in Let's Go Eevee. Yep. So what would you do in Pikachu? So if you were to do this, yeah. So basically in um so for this final fight um in both games you have to set up uh normally with the one controller strategy you do an x special defense which allows you to tank more hits um and then you have to set up one x speed and two x specials um pikachu a lot of the time you have to set up a third x special but you can set up on the vile plume uh because the vile plume yep. is basically guaranteed to go for solar beam um solar beam, yeah. so what you do instead with the two controller strat here and the Meowth is turn one, you set up the X speed and fake out. Turn two, you set up an X special and an X special. So now your setup is done and the Pidgeot will kill the Meowth because it'll see a kill and will target the Meowth instead. Um, if you don't have something that can use fake out, what you can do is put any Pokemon there that will die. So you can use one of like the route one bugs or, you know, really anything early game. Um, and turn one, you do two turns of setup. So you do your X speed and X special turn three or turn two. Um, after your partner faints, uh, you set up one more X special uh, while getting hit by the Pidgeot. So you risk basically getting crit. Um, but it's like one turn to crit. And even then you live, you just have to heal uh, to prevent quick attack from killing you. So. Um, okay. Yeah, so it ends up, I think it's technically faster to not use Meowth, um, but you do add that little bit of extra risk, and it could be a slower fight because of it. Yeah, on the Pikachu side of things, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Or if yeah. In, slow, like, you don't always get you use, yeah, yeah, you don't always get Meowth, so um, like true. if you're doing it in Eevee, you could have to do that too. Okay. All right. Um, so that was the first of the Let's Go runs from Echi this month. Uh, the second one here is the uh, No Mount Skips record 30046. Um, so this is the first first 300 in Let's Go Eevee, uh, No Mount Skips. Um, this was a pretty good run overall, um, but we highlighted here, it went to the wrong floor in... Uh, in Sylphco after defeating Giovanni, so I had to take the stairs to to get to the right level. Um, didn't cost the sub three, but uh, definitely cost a, a little bit of time. So um, I know Etu was still kind of pushing this for sub three. Um, originally just wanted like a a, a low three o o time, um, but after getting this so quickly, um, I think his focus is turning more toward the sub three side of things. Um, and I don't want to speak for him, but I believe that sub three and Eevee um, 
is just a bit t- like a little bit harder than it's going it was in Pikachu. So um like I know when he was coming back he was you know hoping he would find like some some more route improvements and things like that but uh after spending a couple weeks with it doesn't really find anything new. Um it's just going to be more of getting a a better run uh than he's had before. So Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, so this is, um, the new second place for let's go Pikachu all obtainable Pokemon. Uh, so this was, uh, by me, I should say, um, five nineteen twelve. uh, the goal was actually just sub five twenty five. Uh, so, cause I already have a five Oh five on the EV side of things. Um, and I'm not as experienced with, with Pikachu. So I just sort of wanted a solid time. I didn't really want anything too wild, but got this run instead um this was a really really good set of spawns um pretty much everything um spawned when i needed it to um i didn't get great catch luck um i think across so average throws against the legendary birds uh, so you have to catch the three legendary birds uh without master ball and on average, each one should take around five throws. I think I threw like a total of something like 30 at the birds. Um, so definitely below average on that front. Um, but pretty much all of the spawns were really good. Uh, there are two 1% spawns and a 4%. Uh, the Kangaskhan was not the last thing I found in Rock Tunnel. Like I actually had to wait for like a Zubat and a... Um, cubone i think it was uh dratini spawned really quickly uh, and then scyther was more of like a an average to good scyther um and yeah uh, aside from that i did get the i got all five of the mount skips that you need to do um because mount skips are allowed in this category um and the only other thing worth mentioning was this was the first time i played let's go in like two months um i had been primarily running a lot of scarlet violet stuff and wanted to take a break for a day or two um and so i was not expecting to get this kind of a run i was more doing the category to just you know fill a stream um but ended up getting this so this is uh the record in in pikachu is a 511 so this is still a bit a ways away from that um but anyone who's run this category knows that like improvements don't usually come like a minute at a time like a normal category uh they're usually like a five minute ten minute pb um until you get down to like the 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 area where you need like really good um spawns to happen so did you have fun with it (laughs) i did have fun with it it was uh it was a fun run it's good. All right. Um, so moving on from Let's Go, um, this is Shady Gamers uh, Legends RCS second place, uh, getting within a minute of the record with a 340.14. Um, it says this in quotes here, so this is not me throwing shade on the, on the, uh, on the run, but this was pretty mid comparing to his PB. Um, but the run was mostly behind up until mid game and only started to be consistently ahead after the Arcanine trial, which is here in, um, Cobalt Coastlands. Uh, so ended up having a bit of time loss near the end, um, but still ended up with a close to a minute PB. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think I want to say he's still going for either sub 340 or record. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh. It's good to see some movement. the The top of the Legends Arceus board is kind of not at a standstill, but um, I know Hulk's been doing some other stuff. Um, and to be honest, just Hulk and Shady are so far ahead of everyone else. Um, but it's good to see some movement. I think it's probably best to say if anyone who's not. He always waiting on Scarlet and Violet. I want to look away for a few. Don't oh, yeah. Know. Yeah. Um, the remaining main series runs we have are all on the Scarlet and Violet side of things. So, yeah, if you uh, want to avoid spoilers, 
um, especially with the first run here. Yes. Uh, it is worth looking away for yeah. a bit. <laughs> and we will have enough time. Too late now. You're a fault. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, this is Chris LBC getting a second place time in the any percent category. Um, actually, it's worth mentioning. I don't know if we we didn't mention this last month because I think it was still being discussed. Um, but there is a distinction now between any percent and glitchless. Uh, this is the glitchless time. Um, there's basically one glitch you can use. Um, and to be quite honest, not a ton of people are running gl uh, glitched right now, but worth making that distinction. Um, yeah, so this is 523.33. Uh, this is about 21 seconds off of uh, Saiyan's record. And uh, what we just saw there with the play rough drop is basically the reason this run isn't the record. Um, that drop ended up you know, wasting a bunch of time. Uh, it is one of the only bad things that can happen during a fight in this run. Um, a lot of the variance with this game, uh, just because of the way that the route works, is down to... Uh, things like movement and to be honest like things like lag um you don't have a ton of variance during fights uh there's there's very little fights that can actually kill the run um a couple that you can waste a little bit of time and uh this being like essentially the final fight in the game ended up costing um costing that record so um i think uh this was a run that he, Chris is definitely happy with. Um, he's mentioned that it's going to be tough to compare against. Um, and yeah, I mean, other than that, it was a really solid run. It was it was nice because I think at the beginning of the month, um, Chris, I think it was me, Chris, and Truly were all within like five seconds of each other um, in second, third, and fourth. And we were all like four minutes off of record. Um, and... So Chris gets this 523, I have a 524, and I think it it sort of shows, at least shows me that it's a lot more possible to reach Saiyan's time. Um, at least until Saiyan comes back. <laughs> so uh, it's it's nice to see, you know, a couple runners closing the gap there. I also want to quickly mention 360p is the only option I assume this Bot is just stuck in YouTube processing hell. Oh, probably. So, not as crisp. But that is why <laughs> it was not your All screen. Right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. I was. I was just gonna say. Uh. So this is a switch run, which would have me explaining it, but I'm actually gonna let Iron take this one. Yeah. So this is. Uh. This is the Path of Legends category. This category. Um. If you haven't been in the Discord has gone through quite a lot of changes uh, in the last month. Um, so initially, this run used Flamigo. So uh, Josh, or fourth gen gamer, routed that pretty quickly. And um, there was a, it got a pretty good time in the Path of Legends category. Uh, Flamigo did, that is. Um, I'm trying to just, just pull up the the times the times are around 54 minutes maybe uh maybe yeah around 54 maybe like a high 53 um but we can see here that saiyan got a time of 5107 uh and he's using meow scarada which is the gra final fully evolved version of the starter the grass starter and um it's kind of weird i kind of want to try I, i'm really interested in just using different pokemon and so i i started playing around with this um uh probably about a month or so ago and i knew people had ran this before um i think there's a japanese runner that started running it pretty early on um with with uh sprigatito and i just wanted to give it a try and see how it looked and it looked really good and there was a huge amount of input from the community there were tons of people that decided to chip in and, and work on running running the game running the category trying a bunch of new stuff out um, including Garf in the chat. We had Pulse doing a lot of work on it, Spider as well. Um, and we, we, we discovered that Meow Scarad is not only faster than Flamigo, it's about two, over two minutes faster. So uh, the main reason why is you don't have to catch a, another Pokemon, which is, which is obviously a nice time save. Um, you do have to obviously go through a couple evolutions. 
Um, but Meowth Skirta just has really good fights in general. Grass just matches up really well against all the Titans. And it has pretty fast move animations as well. Uh, move, as you can probably tell, uh, we are seeing move animations. And this is probably, one I think, the only game in the main series that animations have to be on. So a lot of the routing has gone into finding Pokemon that don't have very fast move animations. Um, so this is the one fight where one of the fights where we use Flower Trick, which is you know Scrata's signature move, and it's a very very slow animation as you'll see here, um, or as you saw here, or you will see here because I haven't actually haven't actually gotten to this point yet. Uh, it's just a very slow animation, so you try to use these moves only when absolutely necessary. And this fight against Tetsugiri is probably the worst fight in the run. Uh, this thing just, I said it that the cat matches up really well, but this fight is just brutal. Um, it's part dragon type, so you don't actually have a type advantage over it. And it has a lot of scary moves. So, um, so yeah, there's just a lot of work going into it. We, a lot of, we actually ended up using Grass Knot um, quite a bit. Uh, so actually the route initially used a physical cat, and then we ended up switching it so that it was using special moves like Grass Knot for most of the run. And then for the very last fight against Arvin, you want physical. So you actually use a bunch of nature mints, um, like the Rash Mint or the, and the Adamant Mint, which is one that you get in any percent as well, or Flamigo, so. Yeah, it was really cool to see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people enthusiastically picking this up. Uh, it does make, the unfortunate side effect of this is you have to actually, um, because the, the way these single story categories work, which they start uh, after you get access to your ride Pokemon. Um, you, you, you're using your starter for the run, so you actually have to reset for a uh, for pretty good stats. Um, and it's very, very difficult to get good stats for this thing because um, of the fight coming up, uh, which is Arvin. If you want to fast forward here a bit, Jordan. Not too much, only a few minutes. Oh. It's, uh, the Arvin fight. Yeah. Yeah, like right there. Yeah, so Arvin's Arvin's got a pretty strong team. He's got to, he's got this Greedent here. Uh this Greedent um uses body slam. And you have to set up two X attacks in order to win. And um you need to have enough defense and HP in order to tank two uh, and as you can see there, Saiyan, I think, took exactly half HP from this greed. And he also took half HP from that Tatsugiri in the, in the Tatsugiri fight. So you're really playing around trying to avoid dying uh, to these two fights. And so in order to have a runnable cat based on the level, because we're running this at level 53, you need to have ideally like 25 IV or better in both HP and defense, roughly speaking, which is ex which is pretty unlikely to to reset for. In addition, you need really good special attack, and really good and really good uh, attack as well. So it's um, it's pretty crazy. Um, but once you get a good enough cat, um, you at least have consistent stats, so you don't have to worry about any weird things coming up, uh, like you did with Flamigo, uh, doing different, slightly different things depending on your stats. I know if, with Flamigo, you needed to reset for Scrappy if you didn't get a Scrappy uh, ability. So that's another thing you can kind of avoid doing. But the So you do a lot of the resetting offline, I guess. And then there's obviously still a lot of resets in the run because these fights are really brutal. Once you're up at that top end, if you get paralyzed by Greedent, so not only is it a chance to two at you, you can get paralyzed. If you get paralyzed, you lose a minute. And once you get to get to record, it's uh, it's pretty tough. Um, perfect example you saw here, um, Saiyan using Leafage on uh, on the Cloister, and I think he uses on on the Garganacle as well. This is something that I think uh, one of the strats that Garf came up with is let's just use the weakest move in our move set. And just because it has a fast animation and it just happens to kill a couple things in the final fight, and we don't really need that move slot for anything else anyway. So <laughs> it's actually kind of funny using the starting move in the final fight, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty uh, pretty cool category. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of activity. So just for just for reference, I think. Um, there was one particular day, I know Pulse did a video on his, on his YouTube channel, 
Uh, there was one day where there were five record or six records in this category in about five hours. Uh, so we had Trevaria, Pulse, Saiyan, and then Chris LBC getting two records back to back. And then I think there were more the following couple days as well. So it was absolutely crazy <laughs> seeing everybody running this and getting solid times. And I think the top five runs or five or six runs in on the leaderboard now are all with the cat. So Flamigo has been obsoleted completely. Uh, yeah, we see Trevari on the chat. It's seven seven records in the end. So quite a lot. There was also uh, it was also used in the glitched category as well. So Pulse ended up running that with uh, with the super glide glitch. I think I think we talked about it last time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got a he, I think he got record with Cat as well in that. So it was absolutely insane to see uh, so much enthusiasm and activity uh, with running this. It's a nice short category, lots of fun, um, really easy to grind down. Although it is quite annoying once you die to Tatsugiri over and over again, as, as I could attest to. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the top time in Flamigo is uh, 54.13 by Truly right now, and that's sixth place. So there are five runs above that. Um, runners above that and with uh, who ran cat so it's a uh, it's a pretty solid pokemon you guys want to add anything or uh, have any questions but this i kind of hope i covered everything i think i think you got everything from my end i think the only other thing worth mentioning i know pulse has been trying to weasel the meow scarada into some of the other categories as well um yes, hasn't quite been able to do it um but it does look promising and especially like the uh victory road category which is actually the one we're talking about next yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of interest from a lot of people to try different pokemon uh to beat flamigo so uh victory road looks like the most likely but uh, we'll see how things go i also want to i guess we could move on the call it saying cat category <laughs> <laughs> As I delete that message. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so uh, this is uh, Jay Wow, who was actually on the podcast last month. I'm um, talking about this category uh, with a new Victory Road glitchless record. Uh, 2.16.07. So nine seconds off of Saiyan's run. Um, the the big thing that enabled him to get the the record uh, was just shown here. Basically, the Go Goat uh, can either go for bulk up or it can go for play rough. Um, play rough is you don't really have to worry about the uh, stat drop from play rough. Um, I think you can just sort of continue the fight anyways. Um, but Nimona has flavor text as you can see. Um, or Gita, and, yeah, yeah, or Gita, yeah. Um, and the the flavor text is I want to say that there's one for getting hit by her and one for getting hit by a super effective move by her. Um, and so you end up getting both of those if you get hit by play rough. And so uh, that was able to to save enough time to to get the record here. Um, other than like little optimizations to the route in terms of things like candies and whatnot, um, the the main difference here, um, as opposed to the run that Saiyan did, was the uh, partner Pokemon that you use in the double gym. Um, so a lot of the focus in this category is coming up with a really good doubles partner uh, for the ghost gym. Uh, you need something that you know fills a lot of these requirements. It has to be able to one shot things. It has to be able to um, not get hit for super effective because there's flavor text there as well. Like there's a whole bunch of things that have to go into it. Um, and funny enough, uh, JWoww and I both independently came up with the same partner pokemon um but uh jy was able to capitalize on it better than i did uh, and that is actually a hariyama so hariyama has a ridiculously high catch rate for a second stage pokemon um and so um there is a static hariyama that um you can get it's a bit out of the way um or you can happen upon one in the cave on the way to alfernada um you have to do slightly different things if you get the one in the cave going to Alphornada just because it's a lower level. Um, but either way, it's pretty much a guaranteed catch. Um, or it is a guaranteed catch with a quick ball. And um, 
yeah, it's able to handle these really well. So, um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, does seem like two fifteen is doable. Two fourteen might be possible as well. So, I'm um, excited to see what might come out of that. Yeah, it's actually interesting to note there are a few other Pokemon that are being considered for this category. We, we talked about Meowscarada, and um, there's a couple others that are being considered. Uh, I'm looking at Toxtricity, which we talked about for Starfall, and then also um, Powdernet is doing is looking at doing Gallade. Which is a very interesting Pokemon uh, for this. It's got a pretty cracked move set, so uh, and a, and ability for, for that matter as well. So it's gonna be really interesting to see uh, whether Flamigo can be toppled here. But definitely a lot of fun to see the routing that's going into these. Um, and yeah, that is it for the Switch side of things. Okay. Move into the die games, or I guess more accurately this time, the PMG section. Um, the first, and all of them are actually different PMG games. But anyway, uh, this is Shigeru's Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team, any percent unrestricted Wii U Japanese world record in a 136.34 uh, using the Psyduck Charmander route. Um, like looking over it, like for the most part, the room was either consistent against PB or it saved time. Like the only large, I say in quotations, it was around 20 seconds, uh, being in Magma Cavern, which I believe is either this dungeon coming up or it's like the next one. I'm now curious, I need to check. It was not, no, yeah, it is this one. Uh, so, but yeah, that was the, this, the, like, basically the only large time loss throughout the whole run, so. Very solid run. Uh, I mean, on this is eponymous as uh, PMD Explorers of Darkness, any percent no one to mail DS last 3DS English world record. This is a 523.27 using the Munchlax Totodile route. Um, apparently, an insane early game, uh, which managed to be enough to get the world record despite. I'm losing around five minutes due to having to do the late future. I see eponymous in chat. I will be honest with you, I have no idea what any of that meant. <laughs> but that's what I gathered from your description. So thank you for shout out to anyone who this like puts run information in their description or SRC comments. It's very helpful. As someone who's terrible at doing that. But anyway, thank you though. Uh, as we move on to the third Mystery Dungeon run, this is Shady Gamers, uh, PMD Explorers of Sky Beat Darkrai, No Wonder Mail, DSOS 3DS, English World Record. This is in 8, 8 hours, 41 minutes and 12 seconds. Using the Trico Meowth route, this achieved uh, by the time that he was looking for, so congrats to Shady there. But it was apparently like it was a below average start and a mediocre 350, uh, three, oh, no, sorry, three, 535.51, which is around eight minutes off PB. Also, I'm taking these words from Shady's description. That's, that does not sound mediocre to me. Uh, but either way, using Trico's agility, uh, going the other way in Aegis, which is this, uh, this dungeon, I believe. And then a lot of items to help carry through the Dark Crater. Uh, that allows for a 40 minute PB and a 10 minute world record. So, well done to Shady there. And then, last but not least, for PMD, this is uh, SBD Wolf's Gates to Infinity, any percent wonder. We lost Jordan. Yeah, I think we now. lost. Are we, are oh, we oh, good now? Are you back? You're back. We're back. <laughs> my my USB ports have just. They're being very finicky today, so I apologize for that. Uh, where did it cut off? 
right at the beginning of your yeah. statement. Is it gone again? I think we lost him again. All right, I can I can finish off this one. Um, this so this is SBD Wolves. Uh, PMD Gates to Infinity. Every any percent. No wonder. Uh, Wonder Mail. Uh, 3DS slash new 3DS ENG world record. Uh, it's a seven sixteen fifty two. Um, just reading the description here. No reunion cape all the way until Tyrion Maze from a Kecleon shop. Nice run. Uh, absolutely carried by a disgusting great glacier. So uh, hope that. That was a satisfactory run for him. It looks pretty good. Glad you got carried by a disgusting great glacier. <laughs> and um, we have one more run here in the noted run section. Um, yeah, I can I can take this. Um, right. I don't know if Jordan can hear us. Is the thing. So <laughs> I can hear you. I'll wait till. Can uh, you hear me? Okay, you can. We can hear yeah. you now. Yes. Yeah, I'll I'll always be able to hear you. It's just my mic is going so. Don't okay, worry. perfect. Yeah, feel free to All right, go so ahead. We'll, yep, we can work with we got this one. Oh yeah, there we go. Um so yeah, this is um this is a our our only ROM hack fan game. These these kind of come and go throughout the year. Uh usually they're kind of projects that we kind of do when we're between games, like for main series. So Head Bob did a lot of work with with Scarlet and Violet and decided to play around some other categories. Um, so this is uh, this is Pokemon Unbound. It's a fairly recent ROM hack, um, and uh, this is the latest, hopefully the last patch. And uh, he got a record with this one, the four eighteen thirty nine. Uh, this patch is actually the fights are generally harder than the fast the original patch that we that we ran on. Um, there's a lot of quality of life improvements uh, here, uh, as you saw when he talked to the gym leader. There was no uh dialogue between the gym with the gym leader at all and then also when you use hms you don't actually see any of the uh the little little cut scenes that happen here um this is a fight that's particularly bad we've highlighted this because um he does die here <laughs> unfortunately but it's um there's quite a lot of difficult fights i know he was trying to improve this as well and just it's there's some very finicky uh stat requirements you need uh on your guard chomp and it's it's pretty brutal but uh i don't have too much more to say about this one uh it's a pretty neat game i've i did a run of it i think when it head bob first wrote it we did like an impromptu race of it so it was kind of fun to do one run of but it's uh it's definitely an interesting game very well made as well there's a lot of neat um quality of life improvements it's got a good difficulty curve on it uh, not too terrible there's actually several difficulty modes if i recall correctly so you can actually run like a more easier vanilla type cat difficulty as well as some more challenging category which um yeah head bob's not running the hardest category here i don't know if it would be possible to do quickly but um head bob says he will improve so uh looking forward to seeing that I think that uh, that does it for our uh, noted runs. There were quite a few of them <laughs> this month, which is quite surprising. It's usually what we see when we have a couple. We have a month off, so. Uh, okay. Do you want to go through the Arthur run? Sure. Um, so uh, here we have some marathon runs coming up. Uh, we have Black Speed Two. We really have. We have P's SMV running Battle Revolution Stargazer round two with transfers. Uh, apparently, it's happening right now. So, awesome. Go check that out now. We also have unapolog Unapologetically Black and Fast 2023. P's again running uh, the same category, I believe. Is that the same category? Oh, Battle Revolution Masters Stargazer round two. Um, and that's on February 12th, uh, 1945, is all in UK time. Uh, we also have Mocha Jones 10 running Scarlet at the Legends. That's on the same day, February 12th, 2020, oh, 22 10. 
Um, and then at ESA Winter 2023, uh, we have Silver running Brilliant Diamond Any Percent. That's on February 18th, 1759, and that's on Stream 1 of ESA. Then we have 360 Chrism running Pinball, uh, Ruby Sapphire Beat Rayquaza, February 23rd, 1824. That's also on Stream 1. We have Hawkery and versus Chrysosaurus. Um, that's a Scarlet vs. Violet any percent race. Uh, February 23rd, 1904. That's also on Stream 1. We have Fury Beast running Brilliant Diamond E4 Round 3. February 24th, 9 a.m. And that's on stream number two. And we have Genesis running red, blue, any percent, no item underflow. That's at February 24th, 1430 on stream two. And then the next marathon we have is Speedrun Mag uh, Speedrun Ragnarok. Um, that is, we have Dijon Ketchup running a Crystal Rando. February 21st, 1 a.m. UK time. Uh, the next marathon we have is Mystery Dungeon, RTA, FES 4. We have Icarus versus Ref 417 versus Nat 336633. We have PMD Explorers of Sky, Any Percent, No Wonder Mill race. February 23rd at 9.20 a.m. And then finally we have Frost Fatalis. Uh, 2023 we have swift running coliseum any percent march 2nd at uh 0045 a.m and we have over may running learn with pokemon typing adventure any percent on the 2nd of march 2319 and that is all the marathons that we have coming up Okay, um, we do have the leaderboard roundup next. I guess we're, we'll go through that really quickly. I know <laughs> this has been going for a while. Uh, Jordan, we're, uh, I assume that's what we're doing. There it is. Okay. okay. Right, I think I'm back. <laughs> yep, you are back. Yeah. Yep, yeah, we hear you now. Yes, yeah, so we have a few runs in the uh, the any percent glitchless side of things for red and blue. We already talked about at length about Poke Guy's run. GG's again to him for that amazing uh, amazing run. Um, probably most notably uh, in the classic side of things, Juan Lee getting a one fifty nine twenty eight. Uh, believe he was grinding for that for quite a while and came up short quite a lot so it's nice to see uh him get that time i think that's second place on the or no sixth place i was thinking of he has second in yellow classic um so that's a really solid time there uh, a few other runs 209 by rager that's a pretty solid time for classic as well Lots of activity on that side, uh, and also in the no safe corruption side of things as well. Uh, we talked we talked about uh, Groger's run, and uh, there's a few any percent, uh, the, the full any percent category, the one where it's a true any percent with no restrictions. So a couple times there, uh, pickle plop, eleventh place, and catch them all, one forty one twenty one as well. Very nice. Couple runs in yellow where I talked about Groger's run for, for the no safe corruption side. Uh, third place for Rin Chan DX and gold, silver, any percent glitchless Japanese to Lance. I know that the, the to Lance categories had a bit of controversy in other <laughs> in the English side of things before, but that's a solid, uh, solid time. Yeah, I believe. To Lance is the standard for Japanese, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Ruby and Sapphire, there's a few uh, few runs we have. We already talked about Blue... Um, wait, no, we didn't talk about Blue... We talked about Blue Magma's any percent run. 
but this is a sixth sixth place time in the English glitchless category for the 158.41. Very nice. That is about a minute and change off of record. Is it 157 for record in that game? I think it is. 156.50. 156. 156. Okay, my bad. It's just in the top corner there. Also heard that. Oh yeah, Pokey yeah. guy. I don't... Oh, that's right. Wave beat that time. Yeah. I'm sorry, that Puggy, I will go for Sapphire starting soon. Nice. Uh, truly picking up, picking up uh, Ruby Sapphire and getting a pretty solid 2 of 3. I'm sure he's not done, done with that game just yet. I expect to see improvements for that soon. We already Definitely. talked about the Japanese any percent glitch list time as well, so it's good. Ekman in third on the emulator, two and five eighteen. Yep. And then for Fire and Leaf Green, we have Bouncy getting some really good solid paces in uh any percent for Fire and Leaf Green recently, and the two oh five twelve is pretty solid time. Or which is 20th, which is pretty wild. <laughs> That's uh, the top 20 is that good. A few runs on emulator as well, all by French runners, uh, 208s and uh, 218 there. And uh, Shep with a, an E4 round two uh, PB with 339.02. And then on Emerald, Vince getting a 233 uh, in Emerald any percent glitchless. Ms. Tucker, do you want to talk a little talk about the next uh, few categories because they're DS? Yeah, sure. Um, we have Daniel uh, got a four forty seven fifty eight in DP glitchless on emulator, uh, and then we also have Bouncy who got sixth place in Pokemon Platinum at three forty three twenty five. Uh, I think he started running some Plat Chimchar again, so that's nice to see. We also have Apirjo, uh, 346.47 in Plot Glitchless JPN. I believe that was also a Chimchar run. It's pretty rare that we get a Piplup Pip run that isn't just, it's like, let's go, 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 or Worcester. So yeah, that's all for Platinum. No HGSS. A little dormant. We do yes, have yes, some, oh, sorry. yeah, a little, little, little uh, empty here for DS games. Maybe, maybe because um, there was just we had that moment of activity in ACSS, and now we're just like we only have Worcester, and that that's just gonna be whatever that is. That record. Um. Oh, there's. Also, no black one here, but Skoa did get a PB, so I guess that'll be covered next podcast. Um, then we have black white two. We have Rebentis. Um, I believe this is an outdated PB, but this was a three fifteen forty eight. Rebentis is, uh, Rebentis decided to play white two after getting HGSS record, so it'll be nice to see what he what he does here. Good run by him. Uh, moving on to 3DS runs, you have myself. I got an eighth place run in XY, the uh, 345.21. Um, I it's kind of embarrassing how I kind of threw the pace here because I I was trying to dodge the uh, the victory road encounter where you're trying to like avoid the fear that comes down, and I accidentally hit the trainer that was right below, so oh, <laughs> I no. lost like a oh, minute. No. I'm admitted to that. It was it's definitely 344 pace, but uh, I'm fine with that. We also have JLF. We got a three uh 407. Didn't know he was playing X, but that's pretty cool to see. Um also have ATN 29th and Omega Ruby, uh 30. And as well as Captain Dolphin 42, the 12th place run on um emulator 
Twitter slash NTR at 32627. And I guess Etiquette, you want to take over for the Switch runs? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have a couple of any percent NMS runs for Pikachu. Um, Phantom in 17th with a 312. Um, a lot of movement here on the NMS EV side of things. Um, Etchy with the 300. Um, also, I saw in PB and Clips uh, this morning, I think it was, Saiyan got a 301 in Eevee. Um, so I think that is it's either second or third place. I don't remember what Kick and Run's uh, time was, but um, either way, really solid PB. Um, and that one was a real PB. I think this one, uh, Saiyan had a 302 from back in the Barrier Blitz days. Um, and it was like basically grinding as if... Uh, against no PBs, so uh, that's why the 303 is here. Um, TPAT also got a 304, uh, which is particularly notable because it's on physical cartridge, so I believe that's the f fastest time on physical, uh, which is really cool. Um, we talked about Etchy's any percent EV run, um, and then my all obtainable run, and then Randall actually getting a 550, or a 540, rather, in... Uh, in AOP Pika, uh, first run. Lots of beginner luck, apparently. But either way, that's a really good time. Uh, moving on to Sword and Shield, we have a, a few runs here. Um, Tombow with a 29th place in Shield with a 442. Uh, a couple of Japanese times. Uh, Lemons, Pick Run, and Tilly. Um, and then an any percent with DLC run on Shield, uh, which Shield is a little bit rarer to see than Sword for this category. Uh, but Delta Badger finishing a run there. Really nice to see. Um, moving on to Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl. Uh, one run for each of Glitchless and any percent. Um, Jay Tattles getting a 339 um, in Brilliant Diamond. And. Ocean Bagel getting a sub-20 time, 1950, in uh, the any percent category. Uh, Legends Arceus, um, typical suspects here. Shady getting the, the 340 that we talked about. Um, Blood Dirk also doing uh, their first few any percent runs, I think it was, uh, getting down to a 414. Uh, they've been running catch em all for a while, so... Um, Good to see some improvement there in any percent, and then also getting a catch mall PB with a 903. Uh, <laughs> Scarlet and Violet, we're not going to go through everyone here, obviously. Um, but lots of people submitting times. Um, lots of people like JWoww coming from the single story runs, submitting an any percent time, which is good. Um, well, shout out T Pat as well. He's running Violet and on physical here. So, yep. Yeah, that was a really good time there. Um, it's not submitted to the boards, um, but I know Chrysosaurus also has a 525 on the glitched category. Um, so that's the, the current fastest glitched time. Um, has been grinding that for a few weeks now. So, um, But that one I did notice earlier was not submitted, so um, wouldn't show up here. Um, some good movement there on the... Uh, Japanese side of things as well, um, which their runs include credits, so you would expect them to be, even with text differences, either about the same or a bit longer than an English run. Um, lots of stuff here on the Path of Legends side, uh, which you can see that one day <laughs> where everyone got their records. Um, yeah, most of those are probably all cat. Um, maybe the earlier ones are Flamigo, like early yeah. January, but yeah. Um, Path of Legends glitch. Blood. There's the run from Pulse. Yeah, one distinction for Japanese as well is they uh they have to do the beginning of the run the first fifty minutes or so of the the school tutorial section. So that's why their times are significantly slower than English. Some of the um some of the Japanese runners they have a, a split for English timing, so you can kind of compare the uh, their runs to the english to leaderboards as well just 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 for sort of interest sake um a couple of starfall street category uh, runs um from spider and iron i think these are 
all trying to catch up to Saiyan's Flamigo run using other mains, right? Yeah, so Spider used uh, Venomoth, and I used Toxtricity here. Uh, Spider's been kind of trying a few different things. So he was doing Jig Wigglytuff for a bit, and then uh, Venomoth is a pretty interesting Pokemon. Uh, not one you expect to see as a main. It's usually an opponent in a lot of speedruns, but it's uh, pretty cool to see. And then I think JWoww was looking at running Meowskarada for this as well. Um, and he, he's got some good ideas there, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. All right. Um, the victory road times, uh, JWoww and Triv um, with Das Faro there in sixth. Um, another victory road run for Japanese. Um, looks like it's based on the comments, same route as uh, JWoww's. Um, Treasure Hunt. Uh, this is a this category is basically any percent without the first forty five minutes or the last forty five minutes. Um, this run, I uh, I was annoyed that I didn't run any percent because this would have been right around the time that Chris got for second place if it was any percent. Um, just with the ability to save and quit for lag, um, and just having a standard start and end. But uh, this was this was a pretty good run. Uh, the only thing, main reason it's record over Saiyan's run is Saiyan's run was using an older version of the route. Um, so the route improvements save enough time that I was able to to snag first place, if only for a couple weeks. And I could... First off, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> I feel yes. like I should always ask that first. Uh, I'll... <laughs> I'll quickly go through the side games. Um, eight percent on Switch, fifth for Jaxi Fox, and then also sixth for for Jask Beginner, twenty five forty eight, twenty seven oh nine for them. Then also a world record on a hundred percent for Switch, uh, twenty four twenty seven. Um, still behind the N sixty four version, but still congrats on that. Pokemon Pinball Run. Defeat Sapphire, oh, defeat Rayquaza on the Sapphire field, uh, Anago in third with a 1455. Uh, putting exactly a minute behind Amoeba, interestingly enough. Holoseum, quite a few top runs there. Fourth for Zeke with a 329.47, fifth for Fodo with a 331.59, and then 11th for Swift with a 336 flat. All those getting some good times. Second place for Das Ferrero as well, 100%. The 17 17 34. Ridiculously long run. Uh, Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. Second for Pi 3366. Uh, in any percent, no quick save, no window mail, Japanese Wii U. Uh, and then sixth in the same category for Sora Chin. Uh, we've gone over these world records. Uh, Third in Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX for Strifasada. Or Strifasada. Uh, any percent no gummies. Uh, a 319.09. Uh, Poker Park Wii Pikachu's Adventure. 13th for Dirk DV. A 226.05 on the English uh, slash PAL version in any percent. And then Pokken Tournament DX. A six, uh, sixth place time in the green leaf for Dragon Boy. Uh, eighteen twenty one point seven six seven, and those seem to be a couple of rom hack runs. If what's what's crystal clear, Ian? It's a uh, crystal quality of life sort of hack. Uh, oh, kind of an open world style hack. There's a lot of uh, interesting routing that's been doing. This game's had quite a lot of patches, so it's kind of hard to keep up <laughs> in terms of. Uh... Where things are right now, but it's a fairly popular ROM hack for uh, Gen Two based. Uh, this category appears to be start run from beginning and and beat it with your starter, uh, as opposed to doing a main switch. Okay. I think the um, I think older runs used caught a Dodrio or something and used that, which is pretty good. But we already talked about Head Bob's run. That's a pretty solid time. That will be improved, according to Head Bob. Now we'll move into the category extensions.
Yeah, Groby is off lock, which is mentioned already. Yep, just a frame ahead of Stocky. <laughs> well, Stocky. Uh, we actually are seeing, seeing some Pikachu content here. Some custom starter on the red side, and then alt main Pikachu in yellow as well. I can't imagine how crazy that would be. I'd also like to give a huge shout out to Bill Bonsai, who ran Yel who beat uh, Shifty's any percent glitchless blindfolded time. I actually watched the uh, the end of this run. Uh, Two twenty six thirty eight is nothing to sneeze at for sure for uh, for a blindfolded run. Of yellow. The GGs to Bill for that. Uh, catch them all glitchless. Catch up Kleenex. If I can read that properly. Yeah. Just under a full day. <laughs> Extremely long run. And then I'm with the soft lock percent. Ruby Sapphire. Blue. How okay. do you soft lock in Ruby Sapphire? Well, I think you end up on you end up on Doofer or something like that. Oh no way to get off. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, I don't know the details about it, but that's that's I think the main um... I think NNN is here, so in the chat. Oh, Norman. Oh, uh, so you use teleport, teleport before you can get surf. And because you've beat Norman, Brian, he's not here anymore. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Fun indeed, yeah. No, main right to 999 coins. Pass and pass. Osh. 356. The god pass is pretty cool. Pretty cool concept. Hmm. Second for Minipolis glitchless in uh Pokemon Diamond from Alwo. Three fifty eight thirty one. Oh uh, yeah. Um Alwo and Skoa made a little wager for whoever gets uh well for Skoa's case PB in HGSS or Alwo sub four in DP Minipolis. That they'd make the other run the game that they're running, so Owo has now made Skoa have to run DP glitchless. I believe that's how it works. Owo wins the wager. Congrats to Owo on that. Skoa, get good. Uh, crafted with a 347.38 and HSS Manipolis, along with two other French runs. Uh, Galeno alligator. with for alligator run at uh, 441. I do believe it's been taken down a couple of times actually by Bill Wanzai. Um, I think these are Minipolis for alligator alt main runs. Uh, and then we also have Ashes and March doing um Typhlosion alt main. Both 345. March has a 345.30. That's the record. All right. Uh, we also have Jimmy getting the 1250 silver factory record back with a 4013. Shout out to Bright Powder, I guess. Pretty good. Then we have Bouncy with a Battle Arcade Meta Plus run. 134.32. A couple of bug catching runs. All obtainable legends. So this one was actually pretty interesting from AB Twisty here. <clears throat> so I I assume that Twisty had like some sort of background knowledge on RNG manipulations, but not necessarily like from the speedrunning sphere for HGSS. 
so he kind of surprised us when he submitted this uh, big cut to the all attainable legends run where he kept manipulating master balls just by utilizing some like groups in um in like one of the i think schools or something in violet city so he basically used that to manipulate the lottery id to keep repeating master balls before you were only able to get like two or three in this run but he was he able he was able to get um enough master balls to catch every single legend so yeah shout outs to uh Oh, RNG Medippers out there. It's a nice application. And actually we we tried to look for um an application for his Medip in like say like the glitchless category of HGSS. Um it wasn't likely that we were gonna get, be able to get something, but basically it allowed for us to look for a few more seeds that could potentially have a master ball on it to catch a Raikou. Unfortunately, it, they never lined up. So, yeah, the the one improvement that we'd be looking for is a female Cyndaquil, so that we can deal with Whitney better. But there's still no better alternative to the current seed. So yeah, um, it's a nice little chapter of HGSS huh. uh, activity there. So yeah. We also have JT with a 544. I think this is a minute plus run of AOL. And um, we have a soft lock, black white one run from Milozaki 2052. And we have a alt main superior run by Ashi Sutsun in Japanese 41553 in black white two. Um, head bob. Routed a bunch of alt mains. He's been busy. Um, some of them, yeah, just a fast time. Some of these were unrouted. Some of these, had, uh, he made routes for. Um, so he did alt main runs of Marowak, Charizard, Blastoise, Venusaur, and Aerodactyl. Um, none of them were able to get sub for. I'm not sure which one he wants to, to finally get a sub for as an alt main, but I guess that's something for him to find out um best mon out of all these is the charizard run the 408 16. Yeah. Well, I'm sad venusaur is not better but not surprised <laughs> unfortunate uh we also have omega chad continuing to do, try to do baton passes in every single pokemon speed run uh this time he did Sun Moon. Did that in 17 or 71713. <laughs> and uh for the switch. Yeah. Cadex, so, let, how to get you? Did you do that? Yeah. yeah uh, a couple of alt mains without Eternatus, uh Zekrom and Zygarde. My assumption, I saw I know I saw A uh runs on Twitter. Um, my assumption is that these are basically like second round Dynamax adventures. Yeah. Um, and just take what legend you got. Um, but still cool to see, especially like a 404 is not a bad time at all. Um, for just normal any percent. Um, so yeah, really cool to see there. Um, Spider getting the Tower of Two Fists get Urshifu record. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, this is a run with the XL candy, uh, which is yes, a five percent. <laughs> It's like yeah, I think a it's really five, low percentage. Five. Yeah, so you, you go to the Crown Tundra and you, so you play about 35 minutes of the run and then you have to go for a 5% spawn. And so that's pretty much what you need to get record now. Yeah, um, it cuts out either all or most of the, the chancy grinding. Um, so Yeah, the, the, large, the large candy does cut out the chancy grinding as well, but the XL candy means you just also save a ton of time on... Uh, some of the fights, and you also don't need to do the as Spider saying in the chat, you don't need to do the vista, one of the vistas or the views. With oh, Kung Fu. that makes sense. Okay, because you get enough levels from happiness, so you save a lot of movement time there as well. Uh, it's definitely um, we had a lot of activity in this before. It was definitely something that um, we knew was possible, but uh, <laughs> uh, in my PB, which is the previous record, got a large candy on Kung Fu, which is kind of the standard thing you want for. Uh, 
for that. You can't really do with anything less. So uh, yeah. definitely, definitely good to see uh, that time come down further. All right, uh, moving on to BDSP, uh, we've got an alt route Scyther run uh, from Psychic Champion. And then an all key items run from Salt Container. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is like a glitched category because there are some exclusive or mutually exclusive key items. So you have to get them all. Um, with a four, just under four and a half hours. A um, couple of minigame champion uh, speed runs in Pokemon Stadium. Um, Izamaru and Ikrin. Um, moving on to XD, Gale of Darkness category extensions, uh, Ryzakin with alt mains, Vaporeon clay doll. I guess I never really thought of that for, yeah, for Coliseum and XD runs, you'd have like double alt mains, huh? Yep. Um, yeah, so Ryzakin with the, uh, Vaporeon clay doll time of five hours and 40 minutes and Das Pharaoh with Jolteon Houndoom at five hours and 21. And I think... That is the end of the list. That is indeed. All right. So, yeah, uh, I need to get the chat up. But basically, as of as of right now, the next podcast should be on fourth of March. So four weeks exactly from now. That's that's what happens when it's February, I guess. Except for um, late year. <laughs> Except for Alipia, yes. Which actually is next year, right? Next, next year? year, I think, yeah. Interesting to know. Um, thank you, obviously not here now, but thank you to Pokeguy and to Maddox uh, for coming on. I do appreciate that the time to talk about Pokeguy's run, and also might as well talking about the NSC stuff. Which... Well, like Etiquette, you ran it, what, six years ago? Or know of it from six years ago? A bit different. Now. Yeah. It's a, I mean, I have a time with the current, well, current route. Obviously not any of the... I don't even think I got, like, peak of crit manip, because I'm just not good. But, um... But yeah, it's it's been a while since... That category has come such a long way from when I started speedrunning. Well, well, you can follow any of the hosts... Preferably all of us, but any of us. Um, trying to think, is there anything else specifically? Nope. Before we head off. No, I think that's it. All right, that is good then. I hope everyone has a good rest of their day or evening, wherever they are. Stay safe and take care. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.